Well, welcome back to Big Board. I thought we'd take a quick look at Revolution Games. <clears throat> uh, a new title. It's called Konigsberg. It's a Soviet attack on uh, in East Prussia in 45, 1945, World War II title. Uh, you can get it. It just came out. You can get it online uh, from directly from Revolution Games. You can purchase it either in a Ziploc or a boxed version. I chose uh, due to budget constraints and the... the uh, my previous experiences with this game system, basically, it's called a game system, uh, to to go with this with the shrink with the shrink with the Ziploc version. Uh, my preference typically is to go boxed, but and in fact, in hindsight, I probably should have bought the box because then I could have put Red Typhoon, which is the first game that uh, follows a very similar set of mechanics. Uh, we could have put both in the one box and that would have been nice, but silly me. So uh, budget budget uh, constraints uh, drove the purchasing decision. So let's do the shrimp rip a little bit differently. Let's have a look at the map first. Uh, if you've played uh, GDW's Red Army or the, uh, the Command Magazine Destruction of Army Group Center, you'll be very familiar with this map, particularly if you played uh, Red Army. You'll notice the terrain, uh, the heavy woods and uh, lakes in the center of the map, uh, sort of confounding movement. And then you've got Konigsberg up in the north and down to the south, uh, the Sawalki. Uh, and this is where the third Belarus uh, front works. And then you've got the second Belarus front over here. And the job basically for the Soviets is to shove uh, the uh, German forces back uh, as far north and uh, west as possible and kind of go for it from there. So, uh, you know, it's actually you're, you're pushing them back this way, right? So uh, the Red Army title uh, from GDW, I had a lot of fun with it. Uh, despite uh, criticism that it's an unbalanced game, you really have to look at the situation and, uh, and what was going on here. Uh, so before you go judging, right? I enjoyed it immensely. Uh, so what else comes in this game? <clears throat> and I think we're gonna find, the reason why I mentioned that is we're gonna find the same sort of situation here, right? Where uh, Germans are gonna lose a lot of guys, they're gonna trade space for time, and they're, they're going to uh, have to do the best they can with the victory conditions, which uh, will even out the gameplay a little more perhaps than some of the earlier titles have done. In fact, one of the magazine games I played uh, was over in the first turn and a total waste of time. Uh, that uh, Destruction of Army Group Center, I think it was, a total fail of a game. This, however, I, I think hopefully will be better. We'll see once I play it. That's the kind of the cover sheet that goes in uh, the, the game. And on the back, you have uh, just some summary information. You've got mechanized unit descriptions and what the different uh, unit types are. Uh, some of the action chit definitions and counter definitions here and uh, ret retreat direction, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So pretty straightforward stuff. Counters, very nice. And I'll note one thing here. Uh, the last couple of games I've bought from Revolution have been much, much better quality than some of the earlier efforts. Uh, yeah, no... no uh, no sticky coverings on the counters anymore. Uh, these are great counters. They're well cut and they are aligned correctly and they are nice and thick and sturdy and they feel good. You know, you're not, uh, you're not getting that huge flex that you get out of some of the, some of the smaller publishers that typically uh, uh, put out pretty thin, uh, weak uh, counters that you know, make me nervous, right? They're not particularly robust and we'll leave company names out of that. All right, so uh, just some very nice, subtle artwork. You've got these, these are all gonna be formations, right? The blue and the red. So ease of identification will be good. We know that the 23rd formation is gonna be all these guys. 20th is this, same for the red army. We've got the same sort of uh, uh, allocations and all that sort of good stuff. So pretty nifto. And uh, We'll get into the map. We'll have a closer look at the map in a sec, right? I'll, I'll drill in a little bit for you. Rules, black and white, clean and crisp, uh, well laid out, very straightforward. Uh, this is a very similar to Red Typhoon, which I enjoyed a lot. And uh, this is a game I think you're going to, as one of my buddies has said, uh, who's uh, 
three, four, five turns into it. He said that he thinks he's going to get a good three or four uh, plays out of the game, which is nice to hear. Right? We'll say one thing that you know the uh, the edge on this side is a little tight, uh, so hopefully uh, that's going to be okay for everyone's edition. It'll be fine. The player notes. I stopped reading the player notes part way because it really was starting to tell you almost too much about the game in terms of what you should be doing or could be doing. And I, I, there's some things I'd like to explore. Uh, I was perhaps more interested in some design notes versus player notes that would have been nice to read about, I think. Uh, so an index as well. There's a random events table in this, which is a little bit different from uh, the prior uh, Red Typhoon, I don't think had uh, a random events uh, aspect. Uh, so Stefan Ekstrom, is uh, the designer, and obviously uh, Roger Miller and Co. have um, have done the work on uh, on the development, which is critical for making sure that these smaller magazine and Ziploc bag games are done well. They still need <coughs> development. You can't just let the designer run amok and and pull a system off the shelf and slap a game out and uh, slap some counters on a map and go I call it good. Uh, you need development of a game. You need testing and ideally blind testing. So hopefully this has been done well and we'll know soon enough. Uh, I'm relatively confident that it'll be fine, uh, just given the, my experience with Red Typhoon. So really impressed with the quality of the product that's coming out of Revolution Games. And you can see their uh, logo there. All right, down on the right-hand side, we've got our barrage table and air basing box and a CRT, which is pretty straightforward stuff, right? Nothing, nothing going to shock you there uh, with the with the with the uh, CRT terrain effects, uh, identifying both combat and movement uh, issues or, or items, and you can see I already showed you that. But then you've got your different uh, terrain aspects here, so you could probably this is probably the starting lines I imagine for some of this. Let me see over here on the right. Yeah, there's a, the red triangles are the festong line. And the rest are just defensive lines. Um, cities and towns are smaller, lighter gray color. I'm getting a little bit of glare off here. Uh, so I would say this is a semi-gloss map too, by the way. And the, the stock is standard GMT quality and uh, thickness. And you've got your activation tracks. This is a chip pool game. So you've got a cup and there are formations and you are, each side is given a specific number of formations per turn. And I'm trying to think if this is the same. Uh, and you, yeah, that's right. And so your formation, your formations, your number of activations is gonna change uh, potentially every turn, I'll show you. So uh, the Germans are gonna get five in turn three, then four in turn five, all the way down to three in turn nine and 10. While the Soviets, uh, you know, the two different uh, fronts will receive different levels of activations as well, as you can see. That's a really nice way of, of guiding the gameplay and guiding the tempo and helping, helping it perhaps reflect some of the history, we hope. Right? So, anyway, there you have it. Konigsberg, Soviet attack on the Eastern Front. Uh, Eastern Prussia, 1945, from Revolution Games. I'm hoping it's a winner. We'll see you soon. Hope you enjoyed the quick little look at the game.